What's up, everyone? It's your boy, Norn Rad 89 here. And you know what time it is. We are on to Psycho 3, the third installment in the Psycho franchise. Is this as good as Psycho 2 and 1? We're going to find out. We're going to get into my positives, my negatives, then my rating, and I'm going to send you all home. And, of course, we're going to be talking spoilers. If you haven't seen this film, you need to run out and watch it, then come back to this video so we can talk about it. So Psycho 3, I believe this is... Uh, Four years after Psycho 2, this one's actually directed by Anthony Perkins. And let's get into the positives right away. That's one thing I can say for sure is I love the fact that it's directed by Anthony Perkins. That's really cool. You can see like the little nuggets of his style in the film and his character arc and like his uh, acting in the film is still serviceable. He's still amazing as Norman Bates. And I love everything to do with basically his character arc throughout this film is still special and his chemistry with our lead actress on screen who plays the nun sister character who uh, left the convent oh man that's one amazing thing their chemistry is really special too and i think the story between that is pretty interesting the fact that she was a former nun and it starts out the movie starts out with her and if you were just to go off the first 10 minutes of this movie you probably have no idea that this is a psycho film because it starts off with her and she's at the top of like a chapel ready to jump saying like there's no god and the other sisters are trying to get her down so it's pretty a wild beginning but it leads into she stays with at norman bates's bates motel so that's why we start out with her character we have another character in this film too Dwayne dukes who I wouldn't say is a positive, like he's not, he's a good actor for his character, but he's pretty much an asshole type character and just drives the situations like into negative spaces. And like, he's just there as like kind of another crux thing. I don't know. Cause we have another character too, who is in this as well. We're talking about the story right now. And that's our magazine, like writer character who's digging up dirt on Norman Bates. So there's a lot of characters in this film. Not all of them are great, but some of them are good. Like I said, I love Norman Bates. I love the uh, sister character, Maureen, I think, or Maureen is her character's name. Them two, their chemistry on screen, great. Dwayne Dukes and our character, that magazine chick, I'm like, eh, I'm like a little bit down on those two. So, But another good thing about this film is it does follow the continuity and stay with the like story of continuing that acknowledges the second one. It acknowledges the first film and all those those first two films have implications on the way Norman Bates is in this movie. And he's a little bit tamed in this movie. He's taking himself back where he's not trying to be a killer. He's still doing his taxidermy thing and stuff like that. But he's not straight up killing people or anything like that. He's actually trying to run the motel, make money and do stuff like that. But then certain things happen in this movie that push him over the edge. Another great thing is still we are locale wise still at the Bates Motel and it still has that feel to it when you're watching walking around on set seeing them in the different rooms and seeing Norman at the house and stuff it still has that feel like I said continuity very stable throughout these first three films. Now let's get into my negatives because sadly there are some deep negatives with this film i wasn't a big fan of this one i didn't match my enjoyment i i like this film but it didn't match my enjoyment in terms of what i had with psycho one and two and one major negative for me is that there's too many characters in this film and i feel like the story like anthony perkins didn't write this film there are two other writers for this movie and i feel like the story is just a little bit rushed when we come to that third act and it's probably like I said come to the fact that we have too many characters like we have norman Bates were focusing on his story and the story with the sister character like the nun lady and how her struggles with wanting to have a connection wanting a relationship then we have Dwayne Dukes like it's just all that then we add in the magazine editor chick who's trying to dig up dirt on Norman and write a story about him and asking people and interviewing people so it's like there's so much going on in this movie and then when we come to that last 20 minutes, it's like they're all trying to just, they're trying to wrap everything up real quick. And in the third act, it goes bombastic, wild. And I could kind of appreciate that because it's like a callback to a lot of 80s slashers where they just, they kind of go wild, crazy in the third act sometimes. But it just doesn't fit the Psycho franchise. It's so unlike Psycho for that third act that I really didn't enjoy it. And like I said, the fact that we're getting all these characters, I don't feel like they all get justice in terms of the ending spot in this film. 
Also, the special effects and the kills, I wouldn't say, are the best in this film. It just They're like, you can feel the production value like kind of getting less and less in this movie. It's not as big and badass as it is, I feel like, in the second and first film. And like, especially Lila, her death in the second film is probably one of the best. There's nothing that memorable in terms of kills in this third film. And another thing I could say is the acting, besides Anthony Perkins and our main actress, everybody else is pretty much like just garbage. I don't really enjoy any other character pretty much in this film. So that's like I said, a, kind of a problem. There's some great things about this film that I do love. Like I said, it's directed by Anthony Perkins. The continuity is still there. The fact that we're still at the Bates Motel, I love that. But there's so many characters. The story loses itself in that third act and the kills and special effects are nowhere near as badass or like unique as they are in those first two films. So that's what's kind of holding this film back. But in my book, Psycho 3 is going to get a 7 out of 10. This is still a solid watch. Definitely worth the watch. And still following in the franchise, you know, stable continuity and all that kind of stuff. It just doesn't meet the bar that was set by Psycho 2 and Psycho 1. But next we're going to be on to Psycho 4, The Beginning, which is going to be a first time watch for me. I've seen this one multiple times, but I've never seen Psycho 4, The Beginning, which is actually a made-for-TV film that I think premiered on like Showtime or HBO or something like that. So make sure you stay tuned to the channel. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and have a safe and happy day, everyone. Peace out.